are here with VFX legend Fawn Davis. I am so excited to be talking to you today. Um, welcome. How is your Comic Con going? Are you are you feeling good? Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's always fun to catch up with people. Uh huh. Just seeing out all the familiar faces. Um, yep. We're so excited um, just to talk about VFX and all of the behind the scenes with you because a lot of people are always shocked when they see all of the work that goes in to make all of their favorite creatures and animals and all of these cool magical things. So, <laughs> yeah. so excited to talk awesome. about that. Um, a lot of people starting with the Star Wars prequel. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think it was CG. Is that true? No, actually, that's that's a pretty uh, popular notion, uh, is that everything in those movies, the prequels, was CG. Mm -hmm. We actually did more miniatures for one of the prequels um, than all three of the original movies combined. Mm -hmm. I think that it was just, at the time, the, the latest technology was like, you know, CG creatures and, uh, you know, crowds in Attack of the Clones. They were, they were developing all these new ways to do VFX. So, like miniatures, even even today I get a lot of questions about, mm -hmm. like, well, how does it feel to be replaced by CG, you know? But it hasn't actually happened. It's just that now the focus is on new technology and we're mm -hmm. now with the other departments that work in film, like costumes and sets and props. Those still exist. They're just not as colorful for... Mm -hmm. like movie movie release material oh that's so cool to hear and then um for some of your like iconic projects what is one that people wouldn't expect that is like holds a special place in your heart or like a special element that you added that's just like your go-to oh man there's so many <laughs> <laughs> i've been on over 40 feature films now so it's wow. really hard to, like, okay pick. okay it's hard to pick favorites of anything uh -huh. um i think nightmare before christmas um was extra special because that was the first feature film I ever got mm -hmm. to work on. Uh, the crew was especially nice, and um, uh, I got to make one of the Jack's houses. Oh. Uh, there were three. I got to make one of the, th the three. Okay. I might have made two. But anyway, there were a Interior bunch, design. and I got to make one. Okay. And, and that was really fun. I don't know why that model in particular is a favorite, but I might have to make one for myself one day. Cause mm -hmm. it's, it was just about, you know, it's perfect display size. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was going to say, do you have any of these, like, props or elements, like, at home? Or do you have any, like, collectibles that you're just, like, casually just sitting around? Oh, yeah, yeah. My production studio is a bit of a museum for this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of things from my uh, career. Uh, occasionally, you do get lucky enough that they're getting rid of something and, mm -hmm. and you can acquire it, you know. Um, on Nightmare Before Christmas, back uh, in particular, I got to keep the top of the snow spiral hill. Oh. And I made that for the, um, for the movie. And then um, uh, at the end of the movie, a lot of Disney movies at the end of, uh, it's like a tradition that mm -hmm. animation sells. They'll give those to the mm -hmm. people who work on the crew. So when we, we, that was the first stop motion feature film. And so they're like, well, we don't have animation cells to give everyone, but they gave us props from wow. the movie. So that was a really cool time to be there. Oh my gosh, I would just like stare at all that stuff all day. That is so cool and like surreal to have it like in real life and yeah. see it on the screen. Um, and then also about your studio, um, what are some exciting things happening right now at uh, Fonko Studios? Oh man, Fly Me to the Moon is out now. We made yes. all the spacesuits for Fly Me to the Moon, which we're really proud of. Those, those turned out great. They're historically accurate. We got a uh, consultant, Ryan Nagata, mm -hmm, who uh, mm -hmm. made a lot of the components and then uh, made sure that everything we did was accurate to NASA mm -hmm. um, specs. And then um, it's just, it's frustrated filmmakers who haven't done enough in the last year that we, we all got together and <laughs> we're going to make each other's movies. That's a great thing, though. It's, it's time, yeah. I feel like, right now for all of... All the independent artists to come together and just collab, and so I feel like yeah, we're all itching artists. to get get some get some movie making done, you know. Uh -huh. So um, yeah. that's really exciting. Just for uh, some other movies that you like admire, what's like one of your favorite movie effects that you're just like obsessed with? Obviously, for for me, growing up with Star Wars was a big influence. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people can say that in special effects um, in in my age for sure. <laughs> and then. Um, but one of my favorite things that um, it took a long time to figure out was on the movie Coraline. Mm -hmm. I was tasked with um, designing the portal into oh, the wow. other world, right? And so I had this box in my office at Leica. I was in the art department. And um, I had got three Christmas tree color wheels, and I would put blue, purple, and pink mm -hmm. gels on them. So it gave this really kind of cool lighting in this so giant foam core box with a hole in it. And I would test different materials uh -huh. in this hole. Um, to try to create the portal. And uh, Henry Selleck, the director, would come in and look at these tests and, you know, it either looked too gross or it looked too um, man-made or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there was always something just kind of off about it. 
And this was in my office for nine months. Wow. Um, yeah. And I just kind of experimented with different things and uh, finally landed on hot glue uh, sprayed through a, um, like they call it a spiderweb gun. Oh, okay. Which is just a hot glue gun with some air on the end of it. And you can, you can kind of spray spider webs into sets. Is, is seeing like the BTS of this shocking to like other viewers sometimes when you're sharing like your stories? Just because it's like, like that story yeah. alone is crazy. I, that's why I like to tell people that particular story because it's just such an unusual way to do things. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's, it's like the collaboration. <laughs> but I think that's one of, why it's one of my favorites. Uh-huh. You know, because it was just not, it's not at all what you expect that, that, that the portal into the other world is hot glue. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> it's kind of a neat thing there's, to say. there's a breaking fact right there for Coraline. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's and so that, that's out in theaters uh, this year. I did um, see that. Releasing yeah. it in 3D, and uh, yeah, we did some really nice. cool stuff for that movie. Um, where uh, for like the the take the bedroom or the kitchen or anything like that, um, and I was designing the the those environments, and Henry wanted to do something really fun with the 3D. So mm-hmm. if you are going to see the movie, see it in 3D, and you'll catch this this technique that we used that Henry mm-hmm. came up with, where in the real world we actually so so i would design a set in the computer that was just a normal 90 degree wall room okay yeah and then we would uh meet with the dpp kazachek and uh henry we'd pick uh, an establishing shot angle and lens and camera mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then from that camera in virtual space i would take the back wall and push it towards camera but then line up all the the lines in the room to make oh, it, yeah. so in 2D it looks like a regular room, but in 3D it's actually compressed, so it gives you this wow. kind of claustrophobic feeling in, at a subconscious level. Oh, it's kind of like vertigo, I feel yeah. like, because all of these, this like movement pushing back and exactly. Oh and then God. in the in the other world, we did the opposite. We would push the wall back and then okay. line up all those lines, and so wow. each of those rooms in 2D look a little off because they're handmade, you know, uh-huh, to to uh-huh. be stretched and pushed. Um, but then in uh, 3D, you can feel the kind of uneasy like stretching or compression wow. of those space. I always thought that was brilliant. And unfortunately, if you watch it in 2D, it doesn't come through. We're so, going to watch it in 3D in honor yeah. of, of that because that is worth all of, all of the hype. Oh, my gosh. For this year at Comic-Con, going back to the whole convention, um, what's been so special about coming and just like seeing all of these other creatives? Is it fun to like? Oh, man. It's it's. It's fun at so many different levels. Of course, the people is my favorite thing mm-hmm, to just catch up mm-hmm. with old friends and uh, see people you haven't seen in a while because it's kind of this epicenter of creativity. So mm-hmm. you have a lot of creative uh, friends that meet here. Oh, and so then cool. um, for me, it's also this funny thing of of going walking the floor and seeing things that I've worked on that I'd completely mm-hmm. forgotten about. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, reunion. Yeah, we did. We, we did these. We worked with uh, uh, on a Netflix show called Ultraman. Oh, okay. And uh, we did some maquettes for them. They they gave us the computer models, and we painted up these really nice maquettes that they used um, uh, behind the scenes. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, I was walking through today, and they were they were on display. I was like, "Oh, that's cool. <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> that's a I surprise. That. Yeah, that's really neat. <laughs> oh, that's so you fun. know, so stuff like that. And then I'm a big fan of a lot of this stuff too. Mm-hmm, so I love mm-hmm. going to see the God- Godzilla stuff. And... Oh yeah, yeah. Have you had any like fandoms that you've just connected with back at Comic-Con and just like spark that energy again. I think Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did get to finally work on one of those movies. Oh um, my gosh, how was that? King of the Monsters. Oh, yeah. it was a dream come true. I mean, uh, and it was funny because I was at a convention doing a talk mm-hmm. and one of the audience questions was, um, you know, what franchises haven't you worked on that you really like to? Because I've worked oh. on a lot of the franchises. And you manifest franchises. It. The... And I, say, I said it at that, that talk. I was like, oh man, I'd love to work on a Godzilla movie, you know? And uh, I think it was only four days later, I got a call and they needed some stuff for the movie. So oh, I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, my God. Okay, what, what do you want to work <laughs> so on So now, next? exactly, let's, right? Let's so, so now I want to work on a Tron movie. I'm just putting that out in the universe. <laughs> that would be amazing. And we oh have perfected this technique for uh, illuminated suits. Um, okay. I have my own wiring schematic that uh, uh-huh. helps prevent the uh, lighting from uh, breaking, mm-hmm. which oh, is really hard gosh. to do because performers move around. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. But we designed a um, Spider-Man velocity suit for Comic-Con for the reveal of uh, the PlayStation game a number of years ago. And that suit lights up like the Tron Legacy style light up pieces. And on that suit, it was uh, the first time we tested it, the lights went out as soon as the performer got into a Spider-Man pose, oh, you know? Oh, no. Wait, that's and so it's funny. spandex. Spandex stretches yeah. and wires don't. So yeah. we had to come up with a very unique wiring system wow. for that. But the whole bottom went out, and 
uh, my mm -hmm. friend Judy from Marvel was like, um, well, you know, if, if it doesn't work, I understand, because everyone said this was mm -hmm. impossible, and you were the only one that would take the job. <laughs> You're like, it's good. We're going to make and it like, work. And I'm like, you know, we're, now that you've said that, I have to make yeah. it work. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming. Guys, this is Fawn Davis, and we are huge fans. I'm never going to see Coraline the same after this talk. Yeah, go see it. <laughs> go Should see be good. it, Rudy. <laughs> thank you.